sure. There we are. You're on, Don. Jesus, 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 we cry out to you that in the busyness of life and in the chaos, that you are the God who is peace beyond understanding, who is blessings beyond imagination, who is grace beyond what we deserve. I pray that you would be with each one of us, Lord, to speak to us today to give us discernment and to give us words to speak to one another, to encourage, to edify, to build up our spirit, to build up the body. Lord, I would ask your blessings on Ron this morning, that you would guide him, uh, give him wisdom, give him the words to speak to us that might encourage us and challenge us. Lord, I give you thanks for this group, that while we are separated by the miles, we are connected by the spirit and that we are one body, one Lord, one faith. So we come to you today, Jesus, in appreciation and thanks, seeking healing for our lives, to be healing agents for those that we encounter, <laughs> to be disciples who grow in our wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and service, and to be apostles who go out to share this amazing love that we've experienced. All of your blessings, all of your grace, we seek today, Jesus, through your mercy, for your glory, and in your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Don. Welcome, Anders, and welcome, Grant. And uh, we're going to turn Ronnie loose. Bless you, Ronnie. Thank you for okay. uh, sharing with us today. All right. Thank you. And, and uh, in that prayer, Don, you said about words of encouragement, whatever, and and hopefully, what well, I'm going to share, Will, it's, it's basically a testimony uh, of me, I've, uh, or what I, uh, of my journey on how it, it, I come to be a chaplain in the Order of St. Luke here at this place. Um, it's interesting because there's a mentor of mine, John Rodham knows him very well, Roger Duguay, and he has been teaching us a little bit lately about the importance of testimony and witness and its connection with prophecy with the prophetic and which all we all really spills over into uh the whole healing ministry uh because i don't really think you can have the healing ministry without all the rest the testimonies to build faith things like that so so anyway, i'm going to share a little bit about myself uh the journey that i've had and uh how i i got to where i am right at this moment today so so I'm going to begin, like, I, I live in a, a small community. It's only, I don't know, maybe 500, maybe, on a rural part of Nova Scotia, which most of Nova Scotia is rural, um, very close to the ocean. I can see it from my place. And um, uh, right off the coast here that I can see from my, one of my upstairs windows is one of the a famous place. You may not know it, but... It's been made very popular with a TV show called Curse of Oak Island because I can look out my window and see it. Matter of fact, I used to play on it when I was younger. So it gives you an indication. I've lived here my whole entire life in this, this community in this area. Uh, I'm married with uh, two children. And that picture, I kind of apologize for that picture that John had to send a part of that bio uh, because that's the only picture I had recently. Of, of me and it was with my wife and I, we, um, we did some music by videotaping uh, music, recording it, and then sending it to the, the local church here during the pandemic so that they had music. They didn't have in service, in work people service, but they had music there. So uh, they would shot, put that up on the screen. So that's what I used. Anyway, yeah, so I, I've lived here my whole entire life. Uh, and uh, married here. The church that I ministered in, which one of the churches out of the four, I was baptized in that church. Then I was confirmed in that church, in the Anglican church, uh, ordained in that Anglican church, and basically retired from the ordained ministry that I've been doing, uh, basically from there as well. So I've been, um, 
ordained roughly around 23 years. I have been the associate priest here in this parish of St. Martin's for about 18, and then I had retired. Now, when I was ordained, it wasn't the normal path that where John and possibly Don and I'm not sure how many others here have gone through like the whole university and did the MDiv and stuff like that. Mine was a program where they ordained people locally to work in a parish and that was it. Um, so the curriculum that they used as the main curriculum at that time would have been education for ministry that came out of Swanee. University or Swanee. Oh. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then part of that training was to train for specific ministry that was in the parish that that was the parish needed at that time through uh, uh, reading through being mentored by the clergy that was here in in the parish and uh, and then other studies that would take place for residential uh, learning so it'd be three times a year we would go somewhere meet as a community and then we would have people come in and whatever and share with us and, and help us learn what this ministry, parish ministry was all about. So, so I was locally ordained and that meant that I just worked here in this parish. And when I was ordained, it was interesting because this parish was flourishing. It was, it was back in the early or the late 90s, 1999, but we were still having lots of funerals, lots of baptisms, um, lots of stuff that was going on. The churches were fairly full. The interesting part, it wasn't too long after that where it seemed to take the down slide. And uh, so my role as, as supplementary ministry to the rector became different. Um, it, it didn't, it, there wasn't as much work to do for two priests at the same time. Now, saying that, while I was ministering there, I was still working full time. So, like I said, this was a supplementary ministry to the rector. It wasn't a full time ministry at all. And so things had, cha had changed there and uh, my role changed a bit. Well, actually, it, it changed a lot. And one of the challenges that I've had through that and and uh, Christine, when you gave your testimony a, a few months ago, I really, uh, I could uh, align myself with some of that because being in a parish my whole life, I worked under eight rectors and I can't tell you how many priests in charge that we, I had between. So, so one of the biggest challenges I had as in the ministry here was trying to figure out the boundaries when people would come and go because every person who came had different boundaries what one would uh, want me to do the next one coming in didn't want me to do so there was this constant constant um, uh, tension and sometimes that tension was able to be worked out <laughs> other times like christine like you had said in your testimony uh, it was a lot more problematic and it, it didn't work out and uh and so that was one of the big challenges I had over the 18 years of the parish ministry that I was involved in. And really what I did here was did everything that the rector would do, except on a smaller scale. When I retired in 2018 from this, this it, what was called non stipendary ordained ministry, I, I, I didn't withdraw totally, like I was still connected, but not in the capacity as, as a priest. A lot of the ministry that I would do then was around music. And um, I was basically the leader for introducing the contemporary worship here in the parish. And with a band, we had a worship band called Eastgate for a few years. And um, and so that's, that became my main kind of focus over the last few years was that. So what else can I say? Um, uh, with that, with 
the music ministry, it was a direction that this parish was, it was new to a point, but it became problematic as well because not everybody, as you know, would, pro would take to contemporary music. So the style of worship that contemporary music drew, it wasn't for everybody. And that became some a, a problem as well with, within the parish. We did well to work things out with that. And, uh, and, and uh, anyway, toward, I think it was around 2015, might have been a year or two before that, this parish started discerning to go down from four churches to one. And, um, and it did do that in 2019. After lots of conversation and lots of, of uh, angst, it did go down to the one church. And right now, then after, after that happened, the pandemic happened. So the church here in this parish that I am involved with, and I shouldn't really say involved with because it's a very, very minimal uh, involvement at this moment, uh, really became reduced in, in numbers. It's an older parish, lots of, old, lots of gray hair in the pews, very little young people in the pews. So that's basically where I was actually coming from. And over those, those years, uh, there has been lots of changes within me. The Lord has, has transformed me in numerous ways. But in about 19 or 2015, something occurred uh, with me. And uh, it had to do with a particular uh, purity issue that I was dealing with. And as I was looking back in my journals, I was dealing with that for a long time. A long time. And, uh, but at, in 2015, the Lord actually did something. He actually cut it. And th there, there were steps that happened, but there was a dramatic, dramatic change in me. And I, I remember because of that change, there was tremendous breakthrough in areas of seeking the Lord's face and and, and being in his presence uh, more continually. And because of that, he drew me back to areas in my life that when I was first saved, which was way back in 1985, I think, 83, 85, uh, that's when I first gave my life to the Lord. And I can remember such uh, excitement about the, about serving him and being with him. And that started my journey to, to basically to ordain ministry. Part of my early for early foundation and where I met John Rodham was in what the, we referred to as the arm movement in Canada, Anglican Renewal Ministries, which really was a ministry of the Holy Spirit. It's the first time I learned about the Holy Spirit. And so that excited me. I was involved as a lay reader and, and uh, being really heavily involved in church, which took me through to becoming ordained when, when this program came up in this diocese of, of Nova Scotia and, Prin and Prince Edward Island. And so all those years working in the church, I think I got more work oriented than presence oriented. But then in 2015, when I dealt with this purest purity issue, or I shouldn't say I dealt with it. The Lord dealt with it. That whole excitement came back again. And, and I think I can relate to now where it says about, I think it was Paul that said something about the first love, coming back to your first love. I think that's in Revelations. I can understand that. I can appreciate that more because I believe I was losing that first love, Jesus. Now it resurfaced. I, I'm and, and, and I sense a real hunger for God. And uh, I did since then. And, and I started looking uh, more toward prophetic ministry, looking more into healing ministry, uh, looking more into the things of God and spending time with God. My whole pattern of life changed. Um, I stopped doing things that I was doing 
that was actually feeding the, the actual issue. Um, and, and the Lord dealt with that. So that's a little bit. Now, how did I come to the order of St. Luke? And I just mentioned about the prophetic thinking and, and, and at leaning more into the prophetic ministry. Not big, but a little bit. I was talking in 2000, 2000, 2000, 2020. It was on a Saturday and I was talking to a friend of mine who is the husband of the wife who is the convener of this local order, Order of St. Luke. And I was talking with him and I said something like this as we were talking. I can't remember what the whole conversation was, but I said this. I'm going to read this from the journal because I have been journaling for a long time. And journals, I find, is really special to me because I can go back and see how I've grown or not grown. <laughs> and believe me, there's a lot of ways I have not grown yet. But anyway, here's what, here's what he said. Or here's what we were, when we were talking, here's what came to mind. He said, I was talking to Ross today. I used an expression that I feel like an airplane circling an airport and not knowing when or where to land. So I asked this of the Lord. I said, Lord, is that a prophetic word that I am in a holding pattern, that I'm to wait until the airport, what's on the ground, is ready to receive me? It was in June of 18 of the following year where Ross and Barrett, who are the, the conveners, I think it was a recommendation by you, John, wasn't it? Yes, they asked me to see if I would be the chaplain for the Order of St. Luke here in, in the parish. And I really sensed in my spirit right then that, that that was where I was supposed to land. And so I really do believe that was a prophetic word that God was speaking to me a year before that. And, uh, and now it, it's actually coming into fulfillment or it has come into that fulfillment. The interesting thing, I, I was familiar with the Order of St. Luke a little bit in the, in the past. And while I was involved in parish ministry here, this parish really had a hostile uh, image of the Order of St. Luke. And it did not see it very favor favorably. So the Order of St. Luke that used to meet in one of the churches in this parish, they were told not to meet there anymore. And so there, there's been a whole kind of history with the Order of St. Luke around that and, and this parish. But now I, 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 I believe that where the Order of St. Luke is now and where the Lord has placed me in it, it's, it's a, a place where, where there's a lot of reconciliation going on uh, within, not only within its members, but within the community itself. And we've been connected now with a lot of outside people, like in the Order of St. Luke, some of the teaching things that we have on once a month on Tuesdays, we've had a man come in and speak to us about healing rooms. Uh, we had another uh, gentleman that was, and he spoke about the prophetic. And so we're, we're learning, we're learning. But my hope here for this is that we would learn to be so in, in touch and in, in the place and the presence of the Lord that we would be able to pray for people wherever they are. Right now, I, I'm still hearing in our group people saying, well, I don't really want to pray in a large group. I don't want to pray even in a, in a small group. I'm kind of hoping that is going to change. And I know it will change um, because of just the things that are actually happening here. Anyway, that's a long story story of where I came from. And uh, anyway, I don't know if that's going to be helpful to anyone, but we don't often get a chance to tell our stories. So it's kind of nice. But thank you for